will invite the uh, third speaker, uh, who is uh, Professor Bert Mueller, who is preparing. And um, he is going to talk about nanoscience and nanotechnology for human health, mechanosensitive liposomes for target drug delivery. So I guess we're going to learn more about the liposomes or their mechanical properties as sensors and drug delivery systems. It's all yours. So thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, yeah, I would like to start with uh, another book that is available on the market. This morning was already mentioned. There's a book with a big discount. There's no discount yet. So, but if you are interested in uh, that uh, is a book written by some people also from the audience and I'm happy to advertise and I will concentrate today on two of these chapters. Colleagues of mine, Till Sachs, a medical doctor and Maggie Holme, uh, she is a chemical engineer by training and worked a lot as a PhD student in, a, in the project and Andreas Sumbül is an organic chemist and I would like to uh, show you why we started this initiative and uh, the reason was uh, Till Sachs, a medical doctor, because he was uh, faced with a problem. Uh, they have given usually the, uh, the drug to the patient in a systemic fashion, and the amount was limited because of the side effects, and uh, therefore he was looking for targeted delivery to the stenosed vessels. And the question is how to do that, and therefore uh, Till has asked me, my background is physics, and I thought uh, maybe I could help there. And then for sure the physicists are crazy. They have uh, so very simple, simplified models. You see here the tube. Uh, that could be a, a blood vessel, for example, cylindric shape. And one can easily understand that the blood flow uh, is increased if the cross-section is decreased. And therefore we may have a pure a uh, purely physical trigger for the release of a drug if you put it into, for example, a, a, a mechano-sensitive nanocontainer. For sure, as a physicist, I'm unable to do so, so therefore I have asked Andreas Zumbühl, an organic chemist, uh, for help. And uh, he was uh, dealing also with non-spherical uh, uh, liposomes, uh, so you see that uh, these things uh, might not really work because they are not really metastable, but if you have something like these lenticular shaped uh, uh, structures, then it, it works, and, and Maggie has shown in her paper that it really works in, in, in vitro. And uh, Andreas has uh, shown some, some more results of different structures available. All of them are metastable. For sure, it was not his invention. So if you look back uh, in the early 2000s, when you see uh, already uh, the, the images, uh, how they are arranged. But these are theoretical data. And uh, I think Andreas has shown a lot how one can tailor the different structures uh, on different length scales. Uh, however, the situation uh, is uh, yeah, how to, to, uh, to go forward, and for sure the crazy physicists try to keep it very simple. It may work for the healthy situation, but for sure it will not work uh, for the deceased situation, because you see we have a very complex geometry. So it's not just a tube, as seen, uh, seen before. So uh, we have to figure out how we can uh, determine the actual shape of uh, deceased uh, vesicles. And here um, we were thinking about, for sure, we are a little bit better than you have seen in the previous slide. And uh, we had to find a way to visualize uh, the plug-containing blood vessels. And where we have developed a protocol, and um, it was not so easy to find uh, really the plaque-containing blood vessels that are critically stenosed, but nevertheless we have found uh, some uh, of them that might be interesting. And you see here uh, the, uh, yeah, the size of, uh, of a blood vessel and then uh, the lumen. And for sure one can uh, determine the lumen with synchrotron radiation-based microcomputer tomography. One can extract the lumen. And then the next step is uh, what we can do with the extracted lumen. For sure we can perform simulations, as done uh, by our colleague uh, Vartan Kurt Gulungu from the Institute of Physiology and University of Zurich. And uh, he has uh, demonstrated that we have really the highest 
uh, shear stress value, average shear stress values at the stenosis and not at the bifurcations that other colleagues uh, have uh, proposed. Uh, we have also shown that our in vitro model we have used uh, corresponds approximately to the situation we have seen before. And uh, the next step is, uh, yeah, do we have any complement activation, a subject that had been discussed a lot uh, during that meeting here. And uh, we realized that there is a surprising lack of a liposome-induced complement activation for our specific uh, liposomes. And that was really promising. For sure, the, the data you see here are the unloaded liposomes. Uh, the results of loaded liposomes are outside at, uh, at the posters. And we have also uh, tried to see uh, the copper reaction with animals, the same paper. And uh, we have seen uh, there's a surprising lack of this uh, liposome-induced complement activation. So very promising. And uh, we have seen it also uh, in these, uh, these data. And so I can summarize a little bit. It's an interdisciplinary initiative to come around, but still we are not with a patient. So there is still a lot of work to be done to come to the patient that includes the time, uh, the, the development, uh, the optimization of com containers that we can go to higher temperatures, that means to elevated body temperatures, uh, that is not done yet. And uh, the question, and maybe you can help me within the discussion, maybe after the session, uh, what we should do as the next steps to go towards the patient. We are looking now forward to uh, found a company uh, who can produce it, but it's not so simple because you know that the vascular system of a human body in health and disease differs from animal models, so we have to find the right way to go further uh, to uh, clinical trials. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bert. Uh, thank you. Uh, compared to an Italian and Korean, you have been actually one minute earlier in, uh, in finishing. I think that we might have actually time for two burning questions. Very good. So how unstable are your liposomes? I really like and love your presentation, but how unstable? Let me rephrase it in a... So if they're really unstable or metastable, right, they might actually break apart already as soon as they are injected in the bloodstream rather than at the place of constrictions and so on. So do you have an idea of how unstable and how, you know, this non-sphericity is affecting the stability of your liposomes in the circulation? Yeah, so... First of all, maybe we don't need 100% efficiency because uh, if we have a preferential release, we are already the winners. Nevertheless, I feel one can optimize them, and we have shown that they really release at the stenosis. For sure, we are investigated in some more detail. Maybe you have seen in this slide that we perform spatially resolved X-ray scattering. Okay. So with this technique, we want to see how the drug is released from these non-spherical uh, uh, shear responsive uh, liposomes. It is interesting because uh, Formerly, either the uh, liposomes were so instable that they release immediately, mm -hmm. or they were so stable they have not released at all. Not, yeah. But that was shown by Andreas Sumbühl that uh, we are in the right range, also in the right range of, uh, uh, of actual values we have determined, or you can find in literature uh, for these uh, average uh, shear wall stress. So that, that, that could work. So from my That's point of view, it's, uh, it's a solved problem. Maybe not 100%. Uh, it depends on temperature you are looking for sure. and uh, the actual values, but I think we are very, very close. Fantastic. Very interesting work. Any other question on this? Okay. So thank you again, Bert, uh, for your presentation. Uh, maybe, yes, we can clap one more. Uh, and. Uh,